Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So I got the battery pack out of an old laptop that was uh, being thrown out. It has been sitting around for years without being charged. Uh, but I wanted to try and see if I could save the batteries anyway. Most of the cells measured between 0.6 and 0.8 volts. And I'm currently charging those very slowly with the bench power supplies. I started at 30 milliamps and then waited until they got up to around 3 volts and then I bumped it up to 100 milliamps and it seems like they are taking charge but we'll look at those later. Two of the cells though, they are wired two in parallel, were quite interesting and uh, I've never seen this before. So we have the positive end here and the negative end here and you can see it actually measures a negative voltage minus 360 milliamps I think I noticed with the, this battery you can see that's only minus 36 I did hook this up to the power supply and I saw it it uh, read a negative voltage so <laughs> I thought what the fuck did I hook it up backwards because <laughs> You shouldn't do that, of course. But I didn't. It was the battery that had the opposite polarity. So we'll see if these will uh, will recover, <laughs> even though they are well below zero. <laughs> Usually, you say that the batteries will get damaged if they get below three volts, and three volts is probably on the safe side. So, say two and a half volts, then it's really critical. All these cells have been below. Uh, 0 0.9 volts and two of them were 0 0.6 and these two are minus 360 millivolts so it will be interesting to see if we can save these batteries and when I get these charged up I will uh, do a discharge test of them and see how much capacity there's in them compared to the ones that were 800 millivolts and I will monitor them very carefully when I charge them up so they won't catch fire and uh, burn the place down so I still have the power supply set up at the 3D printer here, but... So, I'll hook up the negative one. When I connect the positive, uh, what's the voltage reading here? You see it starts by being negative. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> I don't really know what to expect, but <laughs> so I'll let it charge up to about 3 volts and then we'll bump up the current a little bit to about 100 milliamps and then when we get a little bit higher we can probably give it more current. So I'm setting up a little production run here. The other power supply is charging uh, two batteries in parallel. Uh, I picked the ones that were together in the battery pack. There's no guarantee that will mean they are both good or bad though. A lot of stuff can happen. I think these have been charging for maybe 40 minutes now. Uh, not at 400 milliamps the whole time but it does definitely look like they are charging. If they were totally dead, I would uh, expect either the batteries to be dead short so that they'll just pull as much current as possible and the voltage wouldn't rise or they would be almost open circuit so it would uh, charge up to 4.2 volt almost instantaneously and then when you disconnect it, it would drop again very fast. But it uh, doesn't do that. So, we'll wait until they are fully charged and then we'll do a discharge test of them and see if we can save them. So I charged all the batteries to roughly 3.7 volts. And uh, now it's two weeks later, so we'll measure if uh, there's still some voltage on them. So this one has 3.6 volts. 3.66. Uh, 3.5 3.3 volts 
and 3.4 volt. So I charged them in pairs, two and two, and uh, I'm not sure it was exactly 3.7 volts on, on all of them, but at least these four seems to be good. But unfortunately the ones that had the negative voltage on them have dropped to 1.6. and 2 volts. Now I'm not 100% sure but I think I charged those to 3.7 as well. They might be dead. So I'll go ahead and fully charge one of the bad ones, the ones that had the negative voltage on them, and a few of the good ones so we can see how much capacity is actually in them to see if they are any good or they're just garbage. Remember these have been sitting at, what was it, around 0 0.8 volts for years, so uh, <laughs> our chances are not that good. And two of them, as I said, were negative voltage when we first measured them. So, we uh, charged them to 4.2 volts. And we can just charge them at, uh, let's say, uh, just one amp. I will charge them two in parallel, so it will actually only be half an amp per battery if they are uh, balanced. So if one is not a lot worse than the other, then it will be pretty balanced. I'm using fairly long cables, so that's probably why we see a fairly high voltage. But uh, now we'll just have to wait until they're fully charged and then we can make a discharge test to figure out how much capacity are in the batteries. And of course, uh, perhaps I should say you should only charge batteries in parallel like this if you know they have the same charge. If one is nearly fully charged and the other is nearly empty, then you'll have all the current from one battery rushing to the other battery. and. Uh, very likely you'll destroy something or something will catch fire. So if you do that, make absolutely sure that they have the same uh, potential. So it is now approximately one day after I fully charged these batteries. And we can see one is at 4.1 volts. That would be fairly normal for a battery. And this is only at 3.95 volts. And this one was the one that had the negative voltage on it when we first opened up the battery. And I checked the other one uh, that was in parallel with it. It's exactly the same. That dropped to 3.95 as well. So now we'll do a discharge test and see how much capacity is in them. So we can find out if it's worthwhile salvaging batteries from these old laptop battery packs. So we'll set up the DC load here and um, let's discharge them at 500 milliamps. Oh, let's go 750. We don't have all day. So we go ahead and connect the multimeter to the battery. And uh, we can use the crappy wires for this because it's it's not going to draw any current. I'll use some of my more beefy alligator clips for the current. We will just do this the old fashioned way with a stopwatch because I, uh, I haven't uh, made the timer function for the DC load yet. So we'll just start these at the same time. And we'll stop it once we reach 3 volts and then we can calculate the capacity. Uh, this first one is the one that was uh, completely dead when we got it out of the pack. So honestly I don't expect it uh, to have survived. And we can pretty much see it on the voltage as well. It's not going to last very long. 
So something quite funny is going on here actually. If you remember when I first connected it up, the voltage was dropping fairly quickly. But now once it gets down to 3.26 volts, it starts to to have more capacity at that voltage. Usually if you look at a discharge curve for a lithium ion battery, it will have a fast drop in voltage from say 4.2 to 3.9 volts or thereabouts and it will flatten out and be kind of linear at least from 3.8 to 3.6 or 3.5 volts and then it will start dropping faster again uh, the voltage. On this particular battery the flat part seems to be down here at at 3.25 volts. I wonder if that is because of internal resistance in the battery. So I'm going to try something uh, and it will offset our measurement or whatever a little bit but I'll I'll remove the current and see if the voltage spikes up to 3.7. And you know what, it actually does. So we can pretty much just say that this battery is totally crapped out because it shouldn't have that amount of, of resistance. Not for a lithium ion. So I'll just let it discharge down to 3 volts and uh, then we'll see. So we ran into another problem here and uh, if we put the old uh, wet temperature probe on here, uh, it's heating up slightly. It's, I would say, around 40 degrees, plus minus. Well, it makes sense when we know there's increased internal resistance in the battery, so... Well, I thought this would be a very quick discharge, but what do you know? It actually almost lasted for... 45 minutes and I bet there's even still a lot of the capacity left it's just the voltage is crapping out due to the internal resistance but we're going to stop it here because that's where most of the commercial products would have crapped out and as you see it ramps up what should we guess 3.67 watts so, what's the conclusion? Should you just throw it out? Well, it has loads of internal resistance. It heats up when you discharge it, and it self-discharges the crab out of itself. So, unless you're in a zombie apocalypse, yeah, just throw it out. It's not useful for anything good. But anyway, uh, 45 minutes at 750 milliamps, that would give us uh, 500 milliamp hours so there's actually still a bit of capacity in it uh, that surprises me a little bit I thought it would just like go straight down to zero in a couple of minutes but apparently it didn't so 3.67 volts and we're still rising so it might even be going up to 3.7 volts I'll just mark this one uh, so we can check it later and then we'll discharge the the better one of the two. <laughs> so we rinse and repeat for the second battery. And as you can see here this one starts out at 4.1 volt. And I need to charge my phone but let's uh, start it. So you can see this one is much better. It doesn't drop down straight away either. But only time can tell how much capacity is actually left in it. So we'll come back when we're down to 3 volts. So this one is almost done also. I think I said the other battery had 500 milliamps but of course it is uh, in fact 560. Uh, 500 would have been uh, if it was two-thirds of an hour and it was in fact uh, three-quarters so 
I just want to correct that. So we are almost out of use on this one. And uh, also this one doesn't warm up. I can feel it's a, a bit warmer than the bench, but uh, but nothing like the other one. So you can see this one also uh, rises in voltage, but not as bad as the other one. It has been sitting for a couple of minutes now, and we're up to 3.62. So 1 hour 48 minutes and 17 seconds, that would be around uh, 108 minutes, uh, 0.3 or thereabout. 108.3 divided by 60 is 1.805 hours times 750 milliamps. That gives you 1.35 amp hours. So that's not terribly good if you consider a a six cell battery like this would have uh, three pairs of two. So basically two batteries should provide you the 5.2 amp hours. Meaning that one of these should roughly be 2.6 if they were good. So this one is about half the capacity and this one is just a little more than one-fifth. So I don't know if it's really worth uh, scrapping that old of a laptop uh, for the batteries, but the four out of the six could be useful and the, the last two are pretty much garbage because they also uh, self-discharge. But if you have a project where you don't really care about how good the batteries are, then uh, for sure you can use these. And just for reference, here the the bad battery now measures 3.76 volts. So that have uh, gained quite a lot of voltage. The slightly better one is only 3.68. It's been laying for about 20 minutes I think, but you can see it's actually still rising ever so slowly. But it would be kind of around this figure. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. And if you did, please give it the thumbs up on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See you.